According to Shams and Bill Orem and Sam Emick of The Athletic, the Lakers explored the idea of trading for Damian Lillard, Bradley Beal. <laughs> they repeat Damian Lillard's name twice. So for Lillard, <laughs> Beal, and Damian Lillard before zero in, in on Westbrook. In the two months that followed their first round playoff flop against the Phoenix Suns, when Davis's groin injury left them pulling up, uh, pulling up lame, the Lakers explored the prospect of training for such stars as Lillard, Beal, and DeMar DeRozan. So they meant to say DeMar DeRozan uh, in the Lakers article. Uh, and Russell Westbrook. So, again, I, going back, I, I know we're like, you and I are set, like, okay, it's Westbrook. It is what it is. To know that the Lakers were exploring the option for Damian Lillard, I'm happy for that because he is my favorite player in the NBA. I wish the Lakers would have got him, and I'm glad they made the effort to it. Bradley Bill, I wouldn't you want Bradley Bill over Russell Westbrook? How come that didn't happen? Yeah, I was kind of you know curious. I guess well, I, I, I'm assuming it's because they're trying to trade Kuzma for um, what's his name uh, in Sacramento. Remember when they're trying yes, to do that? Buddy Hield. Buddy, yeah, Buddy Hield. So I'm assuming maybe that's why, but. I mean, I can't think of any other reason, but just the fact that they're actually attempting to go try to get, uh, you know, uh, Dame Dalla, it, it brings a smile to my face because that means that it, it, I, I felt like in, in another alternate universe, it, it would have happened. Like, it, I feel like it could have happened if, if it did, obviously. It didn't go, but obviously, but I feel like it could have. Do you want to know what it feels like? Okay, this is going to sound so Tell wrong, me. but hear me out. You know, like when you're in a relationship and then a girl is single and you're like, and if only I was like single, I would be dating her, right? Like there's that one girl where you're yeah. just like the time. And then all of a sudden when you're single down the road and then she's in a relationship and then like you kind of like she kind of admits to you. She was like, hey, I actually had a crush on you when you were in a relationship. But like our timing <laughs> and past. You know, that's what it feels like yeah. with Damian Lillard. Because the Lakers want Lillard to happen so badly, but the past have not crossed yet. And so when are will they both be single? When will they be able to meet down the road? That's what it feels like with Lillard and Lakers. And I just hope it's not when, you know, when Lillard's washed up, has four kids and, you know, gained like 20 pounds. We don't want that. You know, we want we want the hot Lillard, you know? Yeah, we don't want we no Carmelo we... Anthony Lillard. <laughs> yeah, yeah, not the mellow, not the mellow that we're stuck with. We want that hot young Damian Lillard still jacking threes from half court, you know, at the same time. <laughs> like, that's what we want. So keep it up, Damian. Damian, please, you know, stay hot. <laughs> um, and then as as I was asking you the question, I was like, wow, that's shocking that they went for Bradley Beal. I mean, I would prefer Beal over Westbrook, but I remember that um, there was a report. <laughs> there was a report last week that came out. Uh, Westbrook urged Bradley Beal to request for a trade from the Wizards. So apparently he was requesting for a trade. Bill was the one that opted to stay in Washington. So it was his own decision to do that. And then, needless to say, he was like, but I encourage you to find out other avenues. And that was when the whole Westbrook uh, wanted to go to the Lakers. The GM was like, well, how about the Clippers? And then Westbrook's response was, hell no. So that's where Which all I the love, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> so with that earned brownie points for Westbrook, and when you say hell no to the Clippers and you want to come back to LA for the Lakers, I mean, you want brownie points with the Lakers' eyes. Let's look at it this way. I've never seen Russell Westbrook smile so much in his NBA career yeah. than he has playing with the – or just even – he hasn't really played yet. Like, I mean, he's practicing, obviously, but just with press, interviews, I feel like he's he's turning into a kid. I mean, the fact that he name-dropped KCAL 9, saying that's what he would watch when he would watch Laker games, it's like, whoa, yeah. He would, it's just like me, just like us. Like, he's, you know – He's he's got a heart for you know the Lakers. So if anything, he's just kind of like slowly taking a, taking that spot, not necessarily the spot, but taking a spot as far as being not just the Laker, a, you know, Lakers player, but an LA Laker guy. Yeah. To me, that's even cooler to me. So as much as Brad Beal would make more sense, you know, for me and you, because we I'm on the same boat with you. Uh, I'm kind of glad Westbrook because I feel like he's gonna play. He's gonna play with a little bit more passion. Do you think? Yo, definitely. I think, and trust me when I say this. I saw a lot of hate from Lakers Twitter before Westbrook came to LA. And I when was I, one of them. It, yeah, I was one of the two because I really felt as if, like, I was rooting for Westbrook at first when he was with Oklahoma City. And when Colin Coward came out and said all those negative things about him, going like, I oh, see, I told you so, and blah, blah, blah. I was still rooting for Westbrook. And then when it came to around Houston, that's, that's when I started to lose respect for him. Now that he's with see, LA. Yeah. What? What are you about to say? No, no, no. no, I was just, no go ahead. 
I'll, I'll wait till you're, you're done. Now that he comes to LA, I really feel as if this is a Russell Westbrook who is winning the audience over, and he has not yeah. even stepped a foot onto the court yet. And this is why I like him. And now here's the thing: like I've you know I I've enjoyed his game, and I, I knew he was a killer ever since. Obviously, he was on the Thunder. That's when he you know did most of his damage, especially to us. You know, he knocked us out of the playoffs a couple of times, or maybe it was once. But uh, you know, I, there was battles between him and Kobe, so that's why it's like you know, game recognizes game. So I always had that respect for him. So I, I, when you mentioned that when he was on the Houston Rockets, I I, I agree because that's when I was just kind of like I don't know. I felt like it was I don't know. Was, he played with a chip, but he was also I felt like there's some bitterness or something. Yeah, like he was a villain. He wasn't just like an antihero. He was an antihero when he was on on um, on the Thunder, at least for me. Uh, but he become, became a villain. Maybe it's because he was playing for the Rockets, so I don't know, because I, I despise the Rockets. Same. And then how but, he was trying to talk trash to LeBron when they are about to be eliminated and they were, like, down by 20 points. He was like, you got all better double-team me. And then LeBron just shot back a smile. Yeah, I remember that. <laughs> yeah, I remember that. But I think that's also Westbrook being crazy because he's a crazy person. Yeah. So, you know, he's he's like, you know, he reminds me of that, of uh, he's got that, that skill level of a, like a, of a Kobe, but he also has, like, that fearlessness of a of a, of a meta, like you know, of Ron. Not necessarily want to fight everybody, but he's crazy. Like it, it, <laughs> it's just some of his antics. So uh, you know, I, I, like I said, I, I'm kind of I'm happy now that Westbrook is uh, you know is a Laker. But at the same time, I was yeah, you know, I, I was yeah, I wasn't the biggest fan. I should say. It just occurred to me, if Westbrook really wants to solidify himself, cement himself as a fan favorite before the season starts. He has to take a picture with Rondo's uh, brother, the one that he was yelling at when they were in the series in the bubble. If they take a picture together dressed up in Lakers gear, it's done. It's official. They'll be like, oh, this guy's awesome. I'm waiting for him to like take a swing at CP3 or uh, with Rondo or something like that. That would be dope. Like I feel like they're gonna be like the new uh, the new Smash Brothers on uh, like was that the the Mighty Ducks movie? Or the, oh, the Bash Brothers. The Bash like Brothers. I feel like they could be. Yeah, I feel like they could be those guys. Because, I mean, Rondo, you know, same thing. Westbrook Westbrook has a mouth. Rondo's got fists. So, like, it's, you know, it's they're the, it's a new tag team. I feel like that's why it's even more exciting to me that, <laughs> that they're on the same team. They're on the Lakers. This is so cool. Now, you all you got to do is just touch Rondo in order for them to get them fists. That's what happened with CP3. CP3. Spit in his face. Yeah. Or, like, he, like, touched his face, and then that's when Westbrook or that's when Rondo hit him, right? Oh, yeah, yeah, he pointed his, yeah. Yeah, he pointed at him. Real quick before we uh, wrap up the show again, I think we mentioned this before, but DeMar DeRozan, I really would have preferred DeMar DeRozan over Westbrook, but I like they're both LA guys. Westbrook went to Lawndale High. DeMar DeRozan went to Compton High, so they were at least in the area. I think DeMar also has a unique passion for the Lakers. Um, When Kobe passed away, you saw him while he was a Spur, dressed up in Lakers gear. And I really yeah. think w- the, another reason why I would have preferred DeMar over DeMar, uh, Westbrook, aside from the salary cap, is because you would have actually had more room to play with, such as getting a Kyle Lowry. And that would have added to the already big depth that we see with, like, don't get me wrong, Carmelo Anthony, that's a great, like, reunion tour with LeBron and stuff. I just don't think it's the same Carmelo Anthony as you thought it was going to be years ago. Yeah, no, obviously we're not going to get, I mean, you know, if he stills stays the same as he was on uh, the Blazers, it's a good pickup for the bench. But, yeah, I don't expect him dropping, you know, 20, 30, going crazy, 40. Uh, but, you know, the, he can still shoot. So I, I feel like in those big moments, which we always needed, uh, he's going to be there this time. If, you know, if we got to hit a three, we got five seconds on the clock, I absolutely make sure Mel is open. Because <laughs> like, like, I feel like he can still have that. Do you think at least he has that potential still? I think he's going to hit a three. Um, I, I hope he can knock down the open threes because he's going to get a, a lot of open looks from a lot of different passers, such as Rondo, Westbrook, LeBron. So he's got to be ready. He's got to stay ready. Stay ready. No, I was with you, but too, also with that, uh, the Kyle Lowry and DeRozan. I was with you on that, too. Like, you know, and to me, that would make more sense only because, you know, I think we, they said that the report was there. We could have got him on the cheat, too, because they were both willing to take cuts. Yeah. So they could both be on the team. But the way how it worked out, so far, so good, man. I'm not going to lie. I... I, I'm actually excited because of just where we, it's the expendables meets the circus meets the old veterans. Like there, I, I don't know what to expect. I just hope we stay healthy. Cause if we stay healthy, I think we can win this whole thing again. Yeah. Oh dude, without a doubt. And 
Here's the difference between the 2013 Lakers and then this team. The 2013 Lakers, you had Steve Nash, who was old, right? Uh, you had Kobe Bryant, who suffered that horrible, like, it kind of, like, it, it wasn't career-ending, but it was pretty much uh, something that was a precursor to what the next few seasons were going to be like. And then Dwight had the back issues. I think Powell was hurt. So there was a lot of, like, injuries, and then, like, you didn't have a deep bench. I want to say it was, like, maybe an eight-man rotation with Antoine Jameson and Steve Blake. Comparing that to this team... If Anthony Davis does still become injury prone, or if LeBron James happens, God forbid, to have a season ending injury, you have so many players to come off the bench to provide the utilities uh, for them to stay relevant in the playoff picture. Yeah, we don't have to de you know, depend on the Andrew Goudlock or anything like that. We have a pretty, uh, pretty wide roster to pick with, pick from, which is cool. Like, like for once, it's like we kind of have some pressure lifted from uh, like our bench. Uh, you know, and plus, like, you know, we have some more star power, you know, with, you know, with, with, with the minuses that we, we took this year, you know, unfortunately, you know, we lost Caruso, Kuzma, eh, we all know how we feel about Kuzma, but the additions, I feel like the additions, we definitely upgraded, but yet, you know, someone like ESPN will give us a C minus, but yet, let's see what the reality is. It's, it's an A, it's an A plus. I think we did pretty good.